okay welcome back to another video on uh, sts201 okay we finished off the last one on on groups data finding the measures of uh, central tendencies the mean the median the mode <clears throat> so now we are going to continue with groups data and uh, still going to treat the mean the median and the mode so the group data now for uh, the major difference between though this isn't really needed in your exam because we are we are majorly studying to be able to pass your exam that's what we are doing we're not really studying to know know it like that but it's not really going to come out in your exam but the knowledge is worth it because you are going to do your manual yeah you do your manual so it is very important that you have the knowledge okay so starting off with me um I said the difference between grouped and ungrouped for ungrouped for ungrouped the the, the distribution is just plain just like that but for grouped it will be grouped for example now can be told to group it where you have the class then you have a group maybe one to five six to ten eleven to fifteen and sixteen to twenty let's stop at twenty one to twenty five okay you might be having this group yeah they are grouped and you be you have the frequency as well for the groups like maybe the number that falls between in the distribution the number that falls between one to five probably two the number that falls six to ten i'm just giving random figures as a question so let's let's assume this is a this, let's take for example this is the score the scores of students over 20 in a particular test so the students that scored between one to five in the old class, two of them, um, six to ten, four, eleven to fifteen, six, sixteen to twenty-three, and twenty-one to twenty-five, just one. So let's take this for example, and you are told to find the mean score. The mean score. Since we have grouped the data, then we've grouped them like one to five, six to ten. Then we are going to use the formula for grouped now starting off with mean the formula for mean it's simply summation f x all over summation f so that means you need f x and you already have the frequency now the frequency times the x you need frequency times x so first and foremost what is x so x is just x is simply the midpoint of the group the midpoint so what is the midpoint five and one that's five plus one so for group one five plus one divided by two midpoint remember median that's six divided by two and that's three so the midpoint for this one is three now the same thing goes for this six plus ten divided by two and that's 16 divided by 2 and that's 8 8 the next one 13 next one 18 the next one 23 okay since we already have this then we need to find fx because we need fx so fx is 2 times 3 6 4 times 8 32 32 now 6 times 13 that should be 3 times 6 18 that should be 78 if I'm right 3 times 18 4 that should be for uh, 54 k23 okay, yeah I hope we are getting it okay now we need to find summation fx so we need to find the sum of everything down here i'm going to quickly bring out the calculator you will not see it because i am using 
I'm using a screen record for only that app. So uh, let's let me quickly work out. Let me quickly sum it as six plus thirty-two plus seventy-eight plus fifty-four plus twenty-three. Okay, everything is one nine three. One nine three. 193 k okay. now i need to find summation of f which is the frequency summation of frequency since i need that too okay summation of frequency 2 plus 4 that's 6 plus 6 12 12 15 16 so 16 summation of frequency 16 then in order to find the mean it is simply 193 which is summation of fx that we already have divided by summation of f which is 16 so let me quickly punch that on my calculator and you guys can see it but watching it here 12.06 12.06 that is the mean so <coughs> The formula for mean groups data is summation fx all over summation f, where f is the frequency of the distribution of each of the group in the distribution. The x is the midpoint for the groups. That's basically all. That's basically all. Okay, now that is for mean. Now let's go to median. Let's go to median, and this is where it gets a little bit different. So median. Now the formula for median for grouped data is L1 lower class boundary for the median class plus open bracket n over 2 minus cumulative frequency before the median class all over frequency of the median class multiplied by class size okay this formula is formula that we all should know where l1 is the lower class boundary for the median class for the median colors okay and um, n is the same as summation of the frequencies as the total number of elements in the distribution the elements in the distribution and um, which is same as this summation of frequencies is still the same as summation of frequencies now i'm taking my time to write this out so that we will all understand it okay now that c f b m is simply cumulative frequency before the median class okay i believe we're getting it now the fm is the frequency of the median class and um, the c is the class size class size okay now let's go back this is the lower class boundary of the median class this is the summation of uh, this is the summation of frequency or the total number of elements in the distribution this is the cumulative frequency before the median class this is the frequency of the median class and this is the class size class size okay so Let's start with a calculation. 
I guess we can still go with the previous one now. We can still go with the previous one, which this is the class. Then we have 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, then 21 to 25. And the frequency, well, you might not get it exactly as the previous one, but then. I don't get it exactly as the previous one, but then it doesn't really matter. The point is the understanding. Okay, now let's start with calculating the median. Before you can do anything on the median, you need to know the median class. And how do you know the median class? Yeah, I know some of you might want to say, fine, since this one, if you count one, two, three, four, five. This one is kind of at the middle, so it should be the median class. Well, you're wrong. You might be right, but then you're wrong. It is possible that is a median class, fine, but then you're wrong. You're wrong because it is not depending on the number of classes here. It is depending on this. It is depending on this, not this. So first and foremost, how do we know the median class? How do we know the median class? you know the median class using that n over 2 remember that from the formula remember that from the formula yes using this n over 2 yes so that's how you know the median class now let's go back n over 2 remember we said n is the summation of the frequencies or if you count all the elements in the distribution so let's sum the frequencies is 6 12 15 16 k still got it right 16 over 2 which is um what 8 yeah so where does this it fall where does it fall that's the question where does it fall you need cumulative frequency in order to get that you need the cumulative frequency okay now how do you get the cumulative frequency you had from the name cumulative addition the first one is two this added to the next one becomes six now everything had added up here becomes 12 or you say this six since this is the addition of this two then this six adds to this one becomes 12 this 12 adds to this one becomes 15 15 at this becomes 16. The last one on the cumulative frequency table here should be the same as the total number of the frequency. So once again, how did we get that? How did we get that? As this one comes here. Sorry, this one comes here. Now this one adds up to this to get this. So two, two add up to four to get six. Six adds up to six to get twelve. Twelve adds up to three to get fifteen. Fifteen adds up to this to get sixteen. So I believe we understand that. Now, where does it fall in this distribution? Now you checking the cumulative frequency you'd see that it falls here yeah you got it right it falls here it this is two this is six then it falls here so we can then say since it falls here we can then say this is the median class you can then say this is the median class okay so We already know the median class now let's begin to work with that 11 to 15 so first and foremost we need to know we need to know the lower class boundary since you remember l1 l1 for the median class is one of it so what is the lower class boundary this 
in the median class looking at this median class this one is the lower class interval and um, this is the upper class interval now how do you get the lower class boundary all you just need to do is from the lower class interval you subtract 0.5 so in order to get the L1 for this median class all I just need to do is 11 minus 0.5 and the answer is 10.5 so I already have my lower class boundary L1 okay now still based on the formula uh, based on the formula we've gotten the L1 already uh, L1 already for the median class we already know this now we need to get the cumulative frequency before the median class now uh, let's, let's quickly scroll to the table now the cumulative frequency this is the cumulative frequency table cumulative frequency before the median class this is the median class right this is the cumulative frequency of the median class so that of the one before the median class which is what six so the cumulative frequency before the median class is what six and then um, the frequency of the median class we already that one is straightforward this is the median class the frequency of the median class is what still six now we need to know the class size now how do we get the class size now the class size is actually very tricky the class size is very very tricky now um, you can class size now remember it is the this is the median class the class size is the class size is simply the number of elements you find in the class number of elements in a class number of elements in a class so in order to count we can say 11 12 13 14 15 yeah you count one two three four five then you can see the class size is five yeah but in a case where you have a large group for example maybe one two hundred that's if it is possible but then it is possible it's possible you have something large that you might not be able to count all you might not be able to count all then how do you get the class size yeah you all you just need to do is you get the boundary the lower class boundary remember you subtract zero point five from the lower one which is this then you had you had 0.5 to the upper one sorry which is 15.5 so once you've done that you've gotten the lower class boundary lower class boundary and um, you've gotten the upper or higher class upper upper class boundary okay <clears throat> you've gotten this two all you just need to do is subtract the lower class at uh, the lower class from the upper class that is the upper class minus the lower class and the end at the in the end you get the class size so that is the way as a best way to calculate the class size without counting each of the elements so now we already have everything we have the lower class boundary to be 10.5 we have the cumulative frequency before the median class to be 6 we have the frequency of the median class to be 6 we have the class size to be 5 and we already know that the n is 16 okay now let's calculate the median which is again lower class boundary of the median class plus n all over 2 minus cumulative frequency before the median class all over frequency of the median class times class size so all you just need to do is bring everything inside 
16 over 2 minus 6 over 6 times 5 and that's what 10.5 plus we have um, 8 minus 6 and in the end just 10.5 plus 2 over 6 times 5 and that's 10.5 plus 10 over 6 10.5 plus 1.1.1.1.1 what sorry let me quickly calculate that let me quickly calculate that okay 10 divided by 6 1.666 that's 6 7 then we have 12.17 okay now we've gotten the median that way we've gotten the median so just a quick run over the median is simply the the median is simply getting the middle number of distribution but then remember you cannot just pick the middle you need to know the median class first which is 11 to 15 and how did we get that you first use you first and foremost use this n over 2 that is the old distribution divided by 2 that's half median the old distribution divided by 2 it gives you where the median class for and how do you get it you check it on the cumulative frequency after and how do you get the cumulative frequency you keep adding each of them like 2 comes first here 2 plus 4 gets 6 or you still say this 2 here plus 4 gets 6 and you can add 2 plus 4 plus 6 you get 12 or you just say this adds up to this you get 12 then adds up to this 15 like that you get the whole thing and where does this 8 fall it falls here in the distribution then this is the median class and since that is the median class the calculation should be based on that and then um, the lower class this is the lower class interval this is the upper class interval now do you get the lower class boundary from the lower class interval lower class boundary equals to lower class interval minus 0 0.5 which is 11 minus 0 0.5 cumulative frequency before the median class since this is the median class the cumulative frequency before should be 6 the frequency of the median class itself is 6 and the class size remember subtract the class boundaries you get the class size and you get the auto you get the median now the last one is the mode the last one is the mode okay now we are going to continue with mode mode for grouped data yeah the formula to call for calculating mode for grouped data is the mode is lower class boundary of the modal class plus delta one all over delta 1 plus delta 2 multiplied by class size yeah i know you must have seen something different well it's it's still the same thing just the expansion of delta now where delta 1 is the frequency of the modal class minus the frequency of the class before it and delta 2 is the frequency of the modal class minus the frequency of the class after it okay with that knowledge let's try question still that same question we've been working with since the class 1 to 5 6 to 10 11 to 15 16 to 20 21 to 25 now the frequency i think it was well doesn't really matter okay <clears throat> now how do you know first and foremost how do you know the modal class how do you know the modal class 
the modal class is also the class with the highest frequency the class with the highest frequency and what is the class with the highest frequency based on this question yeah we got it that is it so that's 11 to 15 still 11 to 15 okay since we already know the modal class first and foremost we need to get the lower class boundary of the modal class and i believe we all know that that's the lower class interval minus 0 0.5 and that is 10.5 good we need to know delta one remember delta one is what the frequency of the modal class minus the frequency of the class before it and what is the frequency of the modal class it is six frequency of the class before it is four so since we know that six minus four and that is um, two k now we need to know delta two which is frequency of the modal class minus frequency of the class after it okay so frequency of the modal class is six frequency of the class after it is three so that's six minus three and that is three okay okay so we already have that we already have that and um the class size we already know to get that that is five okay now let's go to the solution so mode equals to the lower class boundary of the modal class plus delta one all over delta one plus delta two all multiplied by what the class size lower class is 10.5 the first the delta one is two now delta one plus delta delta two all multiplied by class size now 10.5 plus 2 all over 5 times 5 5 cancels 5 then we have 12.5 which is the mode and then that ends that ends measure of central tendencies for grouped data we're going to continue in our next video going to continue with rounding off measure of central tendencies as the geometric mean and the harmonic mean thank you for listening god bless you all